Uh, what page was the last paper in your notebook? 77, I think. 77? You didn't have 78, right? Don't put 78 on it. 78 is coming to you tomorrow. It's that where I copy, like, the preview of the whole um, unit on colored paper, and I give it to you. It has the definitions and the standards. That's coming to you tomorrow. Um, so that'll be 78, which means this should be 79. So we'll just for today, we'll put page 79 on it. It is technically a flip book that would get glued down to notebook paper, but because um, because the uh, inside is so crowded, I just, and I didn't want a crease going right down the middle of that, I just left it as a plain old sheet of paper. Trick's the most important. But we still have to cover. Uh, equations of circles will be. Yes. Now that was two years ago. Yes. Alright. No. The ESC actually, though, can you think about the ESC that is easy because the lowest, like the lowest math class in the time period has been able to take it? Or, like, because it's not like in this whole class, the biology in ESC was easy because it's for the whole, like, every biology class in high school. So it's not made for the honors class. At least that's how her report. Yeah, but the problem is they write the questions on a Lexile score that's usually higher than the kids take it, which is unfair. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it challenging. All right, so looking at this sheet of paper, um, should end up being 79. If y'all can put your distractions away, um, that would be great, so that I feel like I'm talking to a student and not a pet rock that's actually not even listening. Um, this paper is going to lay out all of your vocab words that we're going to cover. Today's goal is to introduce you to these vocab words, then practice recognizing the key points um, in a picture. You will have a quiz by the end of this week. So um, if you go to the other side, you're going to see, at first, an overwhelming amount of information. Okay, let me break it down. First of all, there's two sides. You have the left side right here, and then this. the first column is the vocab word, the second column is the definition. You're welcome for not making me write the definitions. The third column is where we're going to draw an example of it. Then the next column is the next set of vocab words, their definitions, and where we're going to put an example of it. Um, and while this paper is really informational, information, informative, um, we're going to jump around. I don't like the order that it's actually presented on here, and I'm just not taking the time to recreate my own. We're going to jump around. So we're going to start right here where it says circle. Okay? Um, this entire unit is about circles, just like the last unit was about right triangles. Okay? This is probably the most challenging unit because every single question forces you to be a problem solver. It's not like with the right triangles where, like when we were doing inverse trig, it was the same every single time, you know, you just had to decide if it was sine, cosine, or tangent. Remember that? These problems are not like that. Every question that you see in circles presents different information, which presents a different approach to solving it. So this is the epitome of you have to be a problem solver. I can't tell you it's going to be like this every time. It doesn't work that way with circles, because the next question may give you a radius instead of a diameter, which changes things. You with me? So go ahead and be prepared to possibly struggle but work through it with the tips and tricks I'm going to tell you along the way, okay? All right, so first let's um, focus
focus on the word circle, and I'm going to zoom in. Okay, what exactly is a circle? It is the set of all points in a plane at a given distance from a given point, also in the plane, and it should include here, called center. It doesn't, but they, it's a set of points equidistant from a given point called the center. I'm going to go to a blank paper and show you a demonstration. Do you remember when we discussed how many points are on a line segment? And we said that there's so many that if I sat here and I tried to find all of them, it ends up looking like one long, smooth line, right? There's so many points on it. In fact, how many points are on a line? Infinitely many. You can't even count them, right? When we draw a line and we do this, it doesn't mean there's only two points on the line. It means I want to direct your attention to these two points on a line of infinite points. You with me? Please stay awake. Okay, a circle is the same concept. There are so many points on a circle. I'm trying to do this without making such a bracket. There's so many points on a circle that if you were to sit here and find all of them, which you can't because how many are there? There's infinitely many. That it would end up creating this nice smooth circle that makes you think there's, it's just a circle, but it's actually points, so many points shoved together that it, it gives the illusion that you've drawn a line or you've drawn a stroke of your pencil to draw it. Does that make sense? So, if I present you with a circle, and there's a point here, and I call it point A, it does not mean there's only one point on that circle. It means I want, you, I want you to focus on that one point of the infinitely many points on it. The other concept that I need you to wrap your mind around is the center of the circle. I'm going to put C. The center of the circle is equidistant, same distance, to any point on the circle, no matter where you go. It's the same all the way around. Do you know what vocab word that would be called? The radius. You should know that word, right? Okay. So go back to your circle graphic organizer. Um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to underline the set of all points so that you understand that we are discussing more than one point here. It's just we don't draw them all. And then to show that there's more than one point here, I want you lightly, as close as you can, to kind of put the dots on the inside so that you just remember this conversation that we're having right now. That there's infinitely many points there. And they are equidistant from the center point, which we are going to call A. Now, if I wanted to discuss that circle without having to write the word circle, I could simply draw an O with a dot in it and then write the capital A. You always name it by the center point. So I would call this circle, that doesn't look like an O, circle A. That's what I would call it. It would be called circle A. Now if that center point had been a B, it would be called circle B. Okay, you always name it by whatever the center point is. And now we're going to jump to the next one, which is radius. Radius is a segment from a point on the circle. Don't worry about the sphere concept. It applies to a sphere as well, but right now we're doing flat 2D circle. A segment from a point on the circle to the center. Okay. Um, by the way, if we have more than one radius drawn, the correct word for the plural version, it looks really weird, 
is radii. It looks very weird, but that is the correct plural form um, for radius. Now I'd like you to underline radius and then box in the little r to represent the notation for the radius of a circle. And now what we're going to do is come over here and we're going to draw just one radius. Okay, just one. From the center to the edge of the circle. We're going to call the center A and the point on the edge of the circle B. And then we can also name this little R with the R floating right there next to it. There's two ways to talk about this radius. You can either call it radius R, or you can call it segment AB, or segment BA. You could reverse that as well, but you don't have to. Notice above it, I did draw the little segment notation to show that it starts at A, and ends on B, there's no arrows going through or anything like that. How many radii can be drawn on any given circle? How many? Huh? Can't count it because how many points are on the circle? Infinitely many. So how many radii can I draw? infinitely many. So when I throw a circle at you with only one radius drawn, you need to understand they're, they're, that's just the one I want you to focus on. Okay? There's actually infinitely many radii within one circle and they all measure the same. Think of it as a spinner. Y'all ever played Twister? Okay, you ever played any type of board game that had a spinner? Imagine the spinner as the radius, right? <laughs> When you go, when you go to um, spin, does the length of the spinner change while you're playing the game? No. No. Um, so think of a radius on a circle. It's the same length all the way around. Okay. All right. Now we're going to scroll to the top and we're going to go to diameter. Radius leads directly into diameter. Can you tell me why? Yes, because a diameter would be, that's my cell phone, my husband just texted. A diameter would be two radii connecting into one straight segment, right? All right, so let's come to diameter. Now, we're not going to do this for all of them. It's just radius and diameter are like the two most important vocab words. I want you to underline diameter, and I want you to box in the notation for a diameter, which is little um, a little D for diameter and then now what we're going to do it says that it's a chord that contains the center of a circle let's go to our picture let's draw the center point and then now what we're going to do is we, before we had a radius going like this, correct? Okay, so the diameter would be if we connected it all the way through the center to the other side. That's actually called a chord, which is what we're fixing to address as our next vocab word. It is exactly, that's my reference. It's like um, a guitar chord. All right, um, let's label. So let's call the center A, let's call this B, and this C. Right here in the definition where it says a chord that contains the center of the circle, let's write point A. Now let me show you a second way 
way to have a diameter in front of you, and that would be you have this straight segment connecting circle to circle, passing through the center, and then you could have this little lowercase d floating next to that center point. Because it's lowercase, that means it's not the actual point itself. It's representing the diameter. Okay? So here's where if you have like a colored pen, it might help to change colors. But this lowercase d is referring to from here to here. Okay? So there's two ways to look at it. We could call it diameter D, or in this case, what would the two end points be of that diameter? CB or BC, right? So we could call it segment CB or BC, or we could call it little d. Okay, be careful right here. Well, you drew it on the outside, and that actually is another vocab word coming up called a secant. So you don't want to do that. You want to, it starts on the circle and it stops on the circle, okay? Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You always got some kind of young song. Is that for us? Well, I. Paid her to make these for me. Are those all for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're for. Um, well, are they? Are you handing out like cheesecakes? They're for teacher appreciation gifts. I really appreciate. Hey, women's teacher appreciation. Right now. Hey, I'll bring you some. Okay. What do you like? Miss Holcomb. Yes. Hi. Hi. Teacher of the year, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Congratulate, Ms. Dr. Gilly. Okay, so there's two ways to talk about diameter. You can talk about it as the two endpoints. Um, notice it does pass through point A. That's important, otherwise it's not a diameter. But I don't discuss A when I'm naming the diameter. Name it by the endpoints, okay? Um, let's go to the word chord up here at the top. What is a chord? We're not talking about a guitar, like instrument, you know, chord. We're talking about the physical segment on a circle. Hold on. A segment whose endpoints lie on the circle. Notice the difference between the two thing, two definitions here, the top one and the second one. What's the difference? This time they don't mention that it has to pass through the center. So we're going to draw one dramatically away from the center so that you realize it does not have to go through the center to be a chord. It's going to go from the circle to the circle, and I'm going to actually draw the center right here, not touching it, to drive home the message that a chord is just that segment within the circle, let's call it B, C, and the only way to address this would be to call it segment B, C, or C, B. Please wrap your mind around the difference between a chord and a diameter. A diameter is a chord. That's why the word chord is right here in the definition. A diameter is a chord that passes through the center, okay? Which means we no longer call it a chord, we now call it a diameter. If we are not passing through the center, I always think of it as a guitar. You know, the open hole on the guitar to allow the, the music. Um, I always envision the strings if I was to look down on a guitar on that open hole and I can see the string going right across it, I think of that as a guitar chord. But I don't know why, but that's what I, that's how I remember what a chord is. Okay. That would be a chord. This is just chord. Okay, now let's go to um, 
The next two words, which are used interchangeably, it all depends on where the line is in the picture. Okay, you with me? So just like a chord and a diameter depends on where the segment is, if it's going through the center or not, this is called secant, long E, and tangent. No, it's not trig tangent. Totally different. Okay, it's not trig tangent. So let's make a note. Let's look at secant first. Um, it is pronounced, I'm going to put in quotes, secant. It's a long E. The way you pronounce it is secant. And it is a line that contains a chord. So this time we have a line cutting through the circle, cutting straight through. Doesn't necessarily have to go through the center. In fact, I'm going to draw the center away from it to show it's not touching it. And I'm going to call this BC. And the way you would discuss this secant line is you would say, uh, you would write BC and then above it you would put the notation with the arrows to say that you wanted your attention to focus from arrow to arrow, not necessarily from B to C, but arrow to arrow passing through B and C, okay? Now, it says in the definition, it is a line that contains a chord. You're gonna, you got to know these vocab words. If you look at this picture, mute in your mind, mute out, or on your paper, cover with your fingers, the arrows, and now do you see chord BC, which looks exactly like what's up here? But now take your fingers off the arrows, and now you see secant BC. So well, another thing with these circles is sometimes more than one vocab word can be represented in a picture. It, you have to look at the notation above the letters to know what part you're looking at, okay? Which brings us to tangent. Let's make a note right here underneath. Not trig tan or tangent. I know, not trig tangent, totally different, okay? So don't start throwing trig into the mix until we have a right triangle. All right, what is the actual tangent to a circle? It is a line that lies in the plane of the circle and intersects the circle at exactly one point. And then if you have a highlighter, it would really help here, but if not, you could... I guess box it in. There is a, another vocab word in this definition, and it's where a tangent line is intersecting a circle. It's called the point of tangency, which is really self-explanatory. Where the tangent line is intersecting the circle is called the point of tangency. All right, here's what it looks like. Find the center of your circle, draw it due north to the point. So I've just drawn a what? What vocab word? Radius. Let's call this A. We'll call this R. Now here's where the tangent line comes in. This is where your um, ruler might be helpful. We are going to strategically draw a line coming right to the circle, it's going to touch right at that unlabeled point, but then it's going to keep going. It's never going to go through the circle. So it's going to go right to it and then keep going. And now we do need to label the unlabeled point. Let's call it B. And we do need a second point on that line. I'm going to one out here and call it C. So that tangent line is BC. It 
has point B in common with the circle, because the tangent line is touching the circle at B, then that point B is called the point of tangency. Okay? And there is a special relationship between the radius of a circle and the tangent line, and it's that they always come together at a 90 degree angle. They always come together at a 90 degree angle. Right triangles? Yeah. But that'll be one day probably next week, and it's actually a very short and sweet lesson. Yes. Um, let's come right here and let's name the tangent line BC. And if you chose to use a highlighter to highlight a point of tangency, it would be smart to also highlight the point B in the picture so that you know the point of tangency in that picture is B. Okay, now I have a question. I'm going to highlight in green and ask you a question. You don't have to highlight this. In green, if I had those two notations in front of you, just the green part, would you know the difference between the two pictures? Nope, because they're labeled the same, right? Line BC. You would have to go to the pictures to know that in this first one we're talking about that and in the second one we're talking about that. Now here's my question. What is the biggest difference between a secant line and a tangent line? There it is. A secant line is cutting straight through the circle, crossing in two spots every single time. A tangent line will never go through the circle. It is always right to the circle, touches it, and then it just keeps going, okay? That's the difference. And that's actually what I want you to try to tell yourself to remember the difference. So here's what we need to write. Um, tangent. I want you to write above it the word touch, meaning a tangent line simply touches the circle, which implies one point in common, right? Now, although I said don't pronounce this as the word second, because it's not, it's secant, it does look like the word second, right? I want you to think second place, and what I mean by that is what number is associated with finishing in second place? What number does it mean Two. if you finished in second place? Two. Two. Which means, this is to remind you that the line is going to cross in two spots as opposed to a tangent touching. You see the difference? Stay with me, y'all, please. All right. <coughs> Let's add to our definition right here for secant um, intersects at two points. It intersects the circle at two points. Alright, so we've covered the definition of a circle, radius, diameter, chord, secant, tangent. Let's come down here to congruent circles. Um, if I ever tell you that you have two circles that are congruent, it means that the radius of both of them has to be the same length, which makes sense. Think of the radius as the spinner, right? So if I say, hey, circle A is congruent to circle B, it means the radius of A measures the same length as the radius of B. Um, so let's draw on our picture. 
we're going to draw one radius coming this way. And we're going to say that it measures 5. That 5 would just be floating there to let you know that it measures 5. And this is to, um, radius AB. And then let's draw another radius over here. Let's mix it up. Let's call this uh, CD. And let's write a 5 next to it. So it's as simple as, hey, the radius of circle A is 5. The radius of circle C is 5. Okay, then circle A would be congruent to circle C. Okay. The next vocab word doesn't really come up a lot. I, I think it comes up in maybe one or two practice problems down the road, probably next week more, more so. It's called concentric circles. Anybody of you, how many of you know what a bullseye looks like or a target? Okay, it does consist of concentric circles, which means it's a small circle embedded with a larger circle, embedded with a larger circle, embedded with a larger circle. What do they all have in common? What specific part do they all have in common? No, part. Name the vocab word that they all have in common. If, no, if you no, have a set right. of concentric circles. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, let me help you. They would all be centered around the exact same center point. Okay. Um, do y'all remember that toy as a kid? <coughs> little yeah. kid, like baby. You probably don't remember playing with it as a baby, but you've seen babies playing with it. It's that tower yeah, of plastic little time. donuts, and you have to yes. stack the big donut to the yeah. bottom. Okay, those are consent. If you were to stand up and look down over that toy, those are concentric circles. And what do they have in common? It's that peg in the middle, which in this case, it's the point. Okay? All right. Slide over to the right. We're going to um, wrap this up. We're rounding third, headed home. This is what? Halfway through quarters. Um, okay. We have. Two types of angles we're going to talk about, and this is a preview of what's to come tomorrow and Wednesday. Okay? You with me? So when you have a circle, um, Colt, stay with me. When you have a circle, you can have angles drawn within the circle, and depending on where the angle is positioned, determines if it's what's called an inscribed angle or a central angle. We're going to start with central angle. An angle whose vertex is the center of a circle, which means its sides are radii of the circle. So let me show you. Right here, we're going to draw the center. Call it A. And then now I'm going to draw a radius here and a radius here. I'm going to name those endpoints B and C. So if I wanted to discuss the angle formed by those two radii coming together, I would call it angle, remember, order matters. I could call it B, A, C, or what? C, A, B. What do you notice is the middle letter of the name of that angle? A. And what part of the circle is that? It's the center. And what is the name of this angle? What type of angle? Central. Where do you think they got central from? Yeah. Central angles come from the center of the circle. Now let's
let's look at inscribed angle. An angle whose vertex lies on the circle. This is the difference. The vertex is on the circle as opposed to the last one where the vertex was the center of the circle and whose sides are now chords instead of radii. So here's what it looks like. We'll use the same letters, but A is no longer the center. A is actually on the circle. And we no longer have radii, we have chords, which means from the circle to the circle, from the circle to the circle. Look at the difference. Now this is still called angle BAC, but it looks totally different. Tomorrow, we will start practicing measuring the um, measuring central angles. Then Wednesday, we will practice measuring inscribed angles, and then I'm going to teach you the difference on how to know which one is which. In terms of drawing it, though, the central angle always comes from the center, and the inscribed angle always has all three letters of the angle name on the circle itself. Okay. Now, circumference and arc length, um, that comes into play next week. Um, let's go ahead and fill it in, but we're not going to talk a lot about it because I don't want to really dive into that until we're starting to practice it. You know what I mean? Because you're probably going to forget it between now and then anyways. Um, so as far as filling in your notes, Please recall that circumference does have the prefix circum, which means around. A um, perfect example would be Christopher Columbus was the first person to circumnavigate the globe, right? Wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I didn't know. I'm doubting myself now. Oh, really? Yeah, I think There's lots of rumors. Maybe he wasn't the first person. He Maybe he same. just circumnavigated the globe. He was, I know he was an explorer. Don't run with that. I might be wrong. Let me talk you too. Christopher Columbus circumnavigated the globe. I don't know when. I don't know if he was the first person, but I do know he explored and he went around the world, right? That's what circumnavigate means. Circumference means the distance around the circle. It's like saying, what is the perimeter but well, we have a circle, so it has to wrap around the circle. You with me? Um, so it's a fancy word for perimeter of a circle. You learned the formulas for circumference. You have two choices. You have 2 pi r, or you have, I don't like to write it like that. I like to write it d pi. Um, and the reason why you have two choices is because what's the relationship <coughs> between the radius of a circle and its diameter? Radius is half the diameter, or you can take two radii and then you have the diameter. You with me? Um, let's go to our picture. We'll just do this. Well, um, let's put point B here. Uh, we're just gonna. I'm just gonna draw like squigglies, to say like with an arrow, and then I'm gonna say um, perimeter. So it's like the perimeter all the way around. All right. Um, arc length is just a proportion. A proportion of the circumference. So arc length is referring to if you had circle A and let's say we had this angle in here and I wanted to know from here to here um, the length, that's L-E-N-G-T-H, that would be arc length. It's when you don't want to know the distance all the way around, you just want to know a snippet, a portion. 
So a perfect example, pizza. Instead of how much crust is needed for the entire pizza, that would be circumference. Arc length would be how much crust for one slice of pizza. That's arc length. So it's still you're measuring the length of something, but you're only measuring one slice instead of all the way around. You with me? We'll practice that more next week. Um, area of a circle will also come into play next week. You should know the formula of the area of a circle. Um, area is pi r squared. When we are discussing the area of a circle, does that say area? That does not say area. Hold on. This is arc. My eyes were playing tricks on me. I read that as area. Okay, so to take, so let me read while I'm there. Let me say it. The area of a circle is pi r squared. That would be like saying how much marinara is needed for one entire pizza. That would be area of a circle. We will hit that next week, because you've covered that before in years past. Now let's go to what it actually says. It actually says arc. Arc of a circle. Um, here's what we mean by the arc of a circle. It would mean if I just wanted you to discuss from one point to another, the degrees within that arc, If I said arc B C, I don't have I could either write the word arc and then the endpoints, or I can write the letters and then watch this. Wait for it. Y'all ready? An arc above it. And that would tell me I'm I'm tracing around the edge of the circle. <coughs> I'm tracing around the edge of the circle from the first letter to the second letter that I see. All right? Which brings us to, and this is where if you, again, if you have a highlighter, this would be really helpful. If you don't have a highlighter, I can throw you one. The arc of a circle. This is the last part. This is important. Y'all stay with me. It's very easy, self-explanatory. The arc of a cir circle opens up three new vocab words. You with me? There's three types of arcs. There is a semicircle, a minor arc, or a major arc. Okay? There's a semicircle, a minor arc, or a major arc. Here's what a semicircle is. Semi implies half. If you've ever, like, if you like certain businesses and they have semi-annual sale, you know, come on down, it's our semi-annual sale. That means it's one of two sales for the year. It's their sale that's halfway through the year. Does anyone want a highlighter? Thank you. All right. So, since semi means half, what part of a circle cuts it in half? If it's drawn on the circle, it cuts it in half. It's a vocab word we've already talked about. Diameter. Please stay with me, y'all. It's a diameter. I want you to go to this picture. Put point A as the center, and then I want you to draw a diameter cutting straight through it. Alright, so we're going to call this diameter B, D, here's Y. Then we're going to emphasize another point randomly on the circle, and we're going to call it C. And now here's where you need that highlighter. You need a highlighter. The semicircle of a diameter, I mean the semicircle in this picture, there's, there's actually two. I want you to focus your attention on one of them. Is from B through C, ending on D. 
Now, where's the second one? Where's the second semicircle? It would be the other direction, right? So, here is the first tool in your toolbox. You're going to hear me say this a lot. This is how, this is one of my strategies to help you with this unit because this is the most challenging unit. The first question I get is, I don't even know where to start. Here is the first thing your mind should say to yourself. Is there a diameter drawn? Because if there's a diameter, then there's a semicircle, which means it's cut in half, which is very important. Important, Okay? I really wish you quit talking while I'm trying to teach. Um, so now, if I wanted to talk about this semicircle, I would label it. This is going to feel weird. I would label it B, C, D, and then draw an arc above it. Order matters. That means start at B, pass through C, end on D. And if I look and I notice that B and D are the endpoints of a diameter, then that tells me this is a semicircle, which is very helpful because you should know this when we get to where we're actually using numbers starting tomorrow how many degrees are in a whole circle 360 right skateboarders that do 360s it means they did a full rotation right okay so how many degrees are in an entire circle 360 well, if a diameter is drawn, the circle is cut in half, which means how many degrees are in any semicircle? 180. So right there, with not a single number drawn in this picture, I can tell you that the measure of semicircle BCD is 180, which is why circles are so difficult because we will have problems where there's no numbers drawn and people are like, I don't even know where to start. And it's like, well, diameter's drawn, so there's actually a secret number there that means 180, right? You actually have two 180s. You got the one that we highlighted, then you got the back side of it, okay? <clears throat> now, what if it's not, what if there is no diameter, or what if it's not necessarily from endpoint to endpoint? This is self explanatory, okay? Minor means less than half. Less than half. So what we're going to do to really make sure you know that it's less than half is I want you to draw the diameter in the picture from the same one above. And then I want you to put C here, but we're going to take our highlighter and we're going to change what we highlight. Now, if you chose not to get a highlighter, how are you going to do this on your paper and still know what you're looking at? You will start to see me do squigglies. I do a squiggly line. It's almost like I'm saying, okay, I'm going from C to D. But it is also really helpful to have a highlighter, okay? So in this case, um, arc C, D, is a minor arc. Now, there is a trend, it's not always, but it's most of the time. Minor arcs are usually labeled with two letters, just two. Which implies take the shortest distance from C to D. Because look, red means wrong. If I said focus your eyes on minor arc C, D in this picture, and your eyes went this way, that would be the major arc. So this is where you have to really be careful with your direction that you're going from letter to letter. You know, is it two letters where you told it's the minor arc? If it was the minor arc, it would be the green arc right there. Which brings us to the last one and then we're done. Major arc means more than half. We're going to copy the exact same picture, keep it simple, and drive home the difference in them. And 
and this time I want you to highlight from B. We're actually going to throw an extra point on here. No, let's don't. Let's just go this way. I want you to highlight from C to D while passing through B. So it would be called C, B, D. Now, when you have a major arc in front of you, typically it is named with three letters or they will say the word major right in front of it, okay? Oh, that's